Hello, and welcome to Kramer Control Tutorials. My name is Tom Copen, engineer at Kramer Electronics. In this video, we will be taking a general walkthrough of the KConfig2 software. KConfig2 is the software needed to create a configuration and upload it to a Kramer Control device. If you do not have KConfig2 already installed into your computer, please see our previous videos for assistance. Like many computer programs, KConfig has a menu bar in the upper left-hand corner to navigate different options and open different windows inside the program. Under the File menu, we have the following options. New Project will create a new project file. Open Project will open a project file previously saved on your computer. Save Project will save the current project to your computer. Save As will save the current project to your computer, but potentially under a new file name. If Auto Save is turned on, your project will automatically be saved when exiting KConfig. Export Configuration will compile your configuration into a specific file type used by our site control software to configure multiple units at one time. Set Working Directory can change the default location on your PC that KConfig uses to save and load project files. Driver Manager will open the Driver Manager, which is where you can create and edit serial and IR commands for specific third-party devices. Import Devices will allow you to add Kramer controllers into the program to be used in configurations. Export devices will allow you to save any custom virtual panels you have created to your PC. Exit will close the program. In the device menu, we have Connect, which will allow you to connect via USB or Ethernet to a hardware controller. Disconnect will disconnect your hardware controller from your PC. Sync Configuration to Device will write the current configuration to your connected hardware controller. Sync can only happen when you are connected to a device. Read device configuration will import the configuration currently stored on a hardware controller into the KConfig software for further editing. Clear configuration will delete the current configuration stored inside the hardware controller. In the Windows menu, we have Save Layout, which will save the current layout of the KConfig windows onto your PC. Load Layout will load a previously saved window layout into KConfig. Default Layout will load KConfig's default layout into the program. Save Layout on Exit will ensure the current layout will remain after the program is closed and then reopened. These items exist because KConfig is a modular program in the sense that all of the windows can be moved around and sized to your liking. We will demo this later in the video. The remaining items are the different windows in KConfig. You can see which windows are open because they have a checkbox next to them. You can open or close a window just by clicking on one. The last item is About. This will display the properties of the program along with the version number being used. Just under the file menu are some buttons. These buttons are quick links to commonly used functions like New, Open, Save, Driver Manager, and Connect. For this walkthrough, I am using a previously created configuration file as an example. If you are following along, this project file is available for download with the link below. Now we will discuss each of the windows of KConfig. The Project Navigator displays a hierarchy and overview of your control environment. It shows what master controller is being used and all the devices connected to it, such as auxiliary controllers, virtual user interfaces, and even the products being controlled. The number next to each device shows its KNet ID number, which allows the device to be individually addressable. Adding and removing devices is as easy as clicking the plus and minus buttons. Watch now as I add a device.
you can see that an RC63DL has been added as an auxiliary panel to the master RC74DL. The RC63DL has been assigned KNET ID 2. Clicking on a device in the Project Navigator will show a picture of that device in the Device View section of KConfig. Some of our devices, like the SL12, have no user interface component and therefore the image is rather boring and non-interactive. Others, which have a user interface component, like the RC74DL selected, allow you to see a layout of the buttons and the LCD panels. In this screen, you can name your buttons or labels by right-clicking the item itself. These labels are simply used to provide user-friendly names to buttons throughout the software. This panel is also used to create keypad events triggers. These can also be created with a right click of the mouse. Virtual devices show a similar layout, but the placement and the number of buttons is user definable. The next window to talk about is triggers. The triggers window is a list of possible events that when triggered will execute a list of actions. These triggers are grouped in the following categories custom events, keypad events, monitor events, GPIO events, timer events, query events, and subroutines. The triggers window has the following options. From left to right, you can add a trigger, delete a trigger, clear a trigger, move a trigger up the list, move a trigger down the list, copy a trigger, paste a trigger, or edit a trigger. Custom events come preloaded in KinkConfig, but their use is completely optional. The device startup event is triggered by the master controller receiving power. It can define how the controllers will appear when they turn on or after a power cycle. Device inactivity will be triggered after the user interface is not touched for a defined period of time. This time is set by editing the trigger. All on and all off and any other newly created custom events will be triggered by a schedule. Editing one of these events will open up a scheduler in which you can decide at what time and at what days of the week you want this event to be triggered. Keypad events are triggered by button presses on the attached user interfaces. A new keypad event is created by right clicking on a button in the device view. Monitor events are triggered by serial commands being received by the controller. When a new monitor event is created, you will be prompted to select a control port and a command to listen for. When that specified command is received on that port, the event will execute. GPIO events are triggered based on signal levels of one of the GPIO ports. Triggers include signal being moved from low to high, from high to low, or if the level has been high or low for a determined amount of time. Timer events will be triggered after a predefined countdown. If a timer is started and not stopped before the countdown completes, the trigger will execute. If your configuration is set up to ask a device a question, query events need to be created to react depending on the answer. Last, we have subroutines. Subroutines are not events. They are custom action lists that can be called by other events. These subroutines can simplify configurations where multiple events do some of the same things. Each event in the triggers window has an action list associated with it. The action list defines what is going to happen when that event is triggered. To create a new action, select Add New Action in the action list and look to the action editor window. First, you will need to select what type of action this will be. The choices are port command, port switch, panel status, timer start stop, delay, query start stop, subroutines, and site control message. Port command will be used to send a command out of one of the available RS-232, IR, or Ethernet ports of your control hardware. First, you will select which port you want the command to be sent out. Then you will select the device or driver attached to that port. 
Then you will select the actual command you wish to send. To make your life easier, configure the port manager before creating actions. This way, when RS-232-1 is selected, the program will automatically know what device is connected and it will select the correct driver for you automatically. We will talk about the port manager a little later. Port switch is used to control the relays of your control hardware. Select which relay you want to use and set it to open or close. Panel status controls how your hardware user interface will look. Panel status is where you turn on and off button lights, decide if the buttons are active or not, set the state of a button, change the text of an LCD label, animate the LEDs for the volume knob, or lock a panel completely. For timer start stop, you will see a list of your timer events. Select the timer event you wish to modify and start or stop that timer. Delay is used to add delay to your action list. If you have a delay between two actions, it will execute the first action, wait for the period of time specified in the delay, and then execute the second action. Query Start Stop is used to start or stop your active queries. If the query is started, the controller will begin to ask the device the relevant question. When the query is stopped, the controller will no longer ask that question. By default, queries are stopped, so if you would like them to run, be sure to start them. A subroutine action will execute the group of actions found in the selected subroutine. The last action is site control message. Here you can arrange for data to be sent to our site control remote management software and written into the log file. Site control software is optional to any project and does not need to be used. For any action, after you've decided what you're going to do, press Add to List and it will add it to the action list for the selected event. Other windows that are hidden by default are Port Manager, Device Settings, and Web Settings. We will take a closer look at those now. Port Manager is for project setup and should be the second step in any new project after setting up the hardware tree in the Project Navigator. The Port Manager will show you a list of the available ports for the selected hardware device in the Project Navigator. Here you will tell the program what device is connected to each port. As I mentioned earlier, this will allow for easier command selection when creating port command actions. For RS-232, the port manager will also set the properties for that RS-232 port. For Ethernet devices, the port manager is also where you select the IP address of the device that you are controlling. To change the properties of the hardware, you want to open up the device settings window. Here you will be able to see and modify things like the IP address of the connected controller, the internal clock settings, and more. These settings are only populated when you are connected to a master device. The final window is web settings. The master controller in your hardware setup will have an embedded web page that you can access. In the web settings window, you can customize the logo on the web page, customize the hyperlink for that logo, and give the room a name. The last checkbox will decide whether you write web files to the device or not. If the web files are not written, there will be no embedded web page. Now that we have gone through the windows, you can see that some are more important than others. As I mentioned earlier, KCONFIG is a modular program that allows you to customize the organization of its windows. We know that you can open a window by selecting it in the Windows menu, Open windows currently have a checkbox next to them. You can close a window by deselecting one of the windows from the Windows menu or by clicking the X mark in the top right hand corner of any window. You can resize a window at any time by dragging the sides. The placement of the windows is also not set in stone. If the flow of the program does not feel right to you, organize it in a way that does. Dragging a window, you will see how you can rearrange them.
You can also pop out any of the windows from the KCONFIG container to be a window of its own. Just drag and drop. If you want to place that window back into the KCONFIG container, dragging is also the solution. Remember that you can save and load window configurations in the Windows menu. If you ever want to go back to the default layout, click the default layout button and you will return to the original configuration of the windows. So that about does it. You have just received a general overview of the entire KCONFIG2 program. At this point, you should have a general understanding for the layout and capabilities of the program. If you would like to dive deeper into specific areas of the software, please tune in to our other videos in the Kramer Control series. For Kramer Electronics, I'm Tom Copen. Thanks for watching.